Coach Graham here, and today we'll be talking about why take omega-3. Now, for any individuals out there that don't currently take it because they don't really know the benefits behind it, or individuals that too, do take it but don't really uh, understand dosing recommendations, this is going to be a really good video for you. Now, to start, there's a recent meta-analysis that showed benefits to taking omega-3 and decreased risk of cardiac death, decreased symptoms of depression, which is a really big one, actually, um, decreased blood pressure, and even decreased waist circumference. There's also been a lot of studies showing improvements in brain brain function as well as it, as it being a natural anti-inflammatory. Now in a recent study conducted in 2017, which come to think that's not as recent as it seems, uh, like three years ago now, but at the same time, 2017, there's a study that showed there may even be ergogenic benefits to taking omega-3. And what it showed was that there was increases in strength, uh, muscle mass, and even decrease in body fat mass in the omega-3 group. Though the study was a little bit uh, uh, skewed by its small sample size and these benefits were very minor, it does kind of open the window or the door for there being even ergogenic benefits to fish oil, oil which kind of brings the question, what can't it do? Um, there's a lot of different supplements out there that people talk about when someone starts working out or for just general health, and they think, you know, creatine, this, that, things that are study proven to, to work, but uh, fish oil definitely deserves to be on that list, if not, if not number one on that list, uh, because there has been so many studies showing its validity in a number of different really important body functions. Now, when it comes to dosing, there's, there's a lot of special considerations here. Now, the FDA puts the cap at 3,000 milligrams or 3 grams per day. And the EFSA, which is kind of like the European FDA, uh, puts this cap, cap at 5,000 milligrams or 5 grams. But there are a lot of special dosing recommendations, especially with individuals with brain conditions or trauma. For example, Dr. Sears actually works with ex-NFL players, and he had one specific person that was an ex-49er, uh, I think, for the 49ers, who went through nine uh, brain surgeries after playing in his NFL career that he got to a point where he basically had no short-term memory. And after a long while of taking 1,500 milligrams or 15 grams of fish oil, which is just a gigantic dose, uh, his short-term memory significantly improved, along with a lot of other measures of brain function. So this goes to show that while a lot of uh, a lot of federate, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, organizations put caps on it at 3,000, 5,000. At the same time, there are some special considerations to dosing where you can go much, much higher. Traditionally, dosing recommendations are between 1,200 and 2,000 milligrams per day, about 1,600 for the most part. But again, there are special situations where it may warrant much, much more. Now, when it comes to the sourcing, this is a very important topic to get into uh, because there's a recent third-party testing group that tested a series of different fish oils on the market, um, and they found that the one of the most popular ones, pretty much anybody I talked to seems like, hey, what brand fish oil do you get? Kirkland 1200. Uh, that's a really popular one because it's so convenient. It's convenient, it's cheap, you just get it on your way out of getting a bunch of groceries from Costco, um, real easy to get. But at the same time, what this study found was that due to its entry coating, it's coating that makes it so that you don't get those you know, fish burps and that slight discomfort after taking it, because of this, it actually uh, got digested or, or fell apart in your stomach rather than your small intestine. Now this is important because your body truly uptakes and absorbs uh, the parts of it that it actually needs in the small intestine rather than the stomach. So if it doesn't make it to the small intestine, you don't necessarily get the benefits proven through studies.